And welcome inside the Backstage Pass. Always a busy day of shows, of course, up until Friday of this week. And then we count down, of course, over the next couple of weeks. More great shows coming up as we enter into May and, of course, into summertime vacation out there on KKTC True Country 99.9 and our friends at HighTideCountry.net. Well, I tell you guys, one of the best things to do a lot of times is step outside of your comfort zone. We do a lot of country music here on the podcast, but it's cool to, today to talk about just four great guys that are doing their thing out there, too. And I love this because their 20th anniversary album is across all those streaming platforms. David Miller of the group Il Devo joins us here on the Backstage Pass. David, how you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you doing? Doing pretty good, man. I'll tell you what, let's start right there because I've, I've really enjoyed this band uh, for a long time. This tenor group, if you will, you guys have put out some great collection of music over many, many decades of doing this. I mean, selling out tours worldwide, stadiums, things like that. Uh, just talk about kind of how this got started, man, as far as you guys meeting up and putting out this great music called Il Devo and this great group and a great collection of songs. Well, um, back in 2003, a, uh, a young, youngish man that you may have heard of, Mr. Simon Cowell, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, was really just starting to make a name for himself with his TV shows. And at a certain point, he got tired of telling people what he didn't like about music or performances or whatever it is, voices. And so he decided to put together uh, a group and he held auditions for uh, over two years, uh, auditioning in 17 different countries to find an eclectic group of guys whose voices blended together but had power enough to stand on their own as soloists. Um, and put them together and sing some of his favorite music. His idea was like, you know, he likes the three tenors. He likes, mm -hmm. you know, classical music, but he doesn't, he found that it wasn't really being marketed that well. So, you know, what would happen if we would take this type of voice and, you know, marry it with pop music instead of classical music and see what happens? And uh, he found... Myself, Urs, and Sebastian, and Carlos at the time put us in a room and said, here are some songs, what can you do with it? And here we are 20 years later, still chugging away. I love it, too. I mean, multi-platinum, classical, the crossover. Uh, I love this because every corner of the globe, it's like everybody has an appreciation for all different facets of music. I mean, mainly I do country on here, too, as well, but there's such a great crossover now, collaborations going on in music. Talk about how important that is, too, and for you guys to be a hit pretty much everywhere you guys go. And I know y'all y'all have done some performances and uh, some different things out there from historical figures, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, Barack Obama, Queen Elizabeth II. Talk about that honor too. Well, we have had a, a, a tremendously blessed trajectory, you know, mm -hmm. that nobody could have predicted what we were gonna do or how we were gonna do it. Nobody even knew um, really what the sound of the band is. It was something that we had to evolve. We hadn't met each other before starting work in the studio. They gave us some songs, some songs worked, some songs didn't. But it was, as you said, it was, uh, you know, a collaborative process. Mm -hmm. It wasn't this idea of like, oh, we got a sound, you know, we weren't a band that kind of came up and had a sound in their garage. We had to cultivate it, craft it, and work together. We had to cooperate, which was the antithesis of what Simon was doing, which was creating competition. We were creating collaboration. And, uh, you know, we did several duets over the years. Um, we, uh, with Celine Dion, with Tony Braxton for the World Cup in 2006. And we were invited to go on tour with Barbara Streisand uh, in 2007. And this was the place where, um, you know, everybody turned up for this mm -hmm. concert to see Barbra Streisand. And she, back in the day, got her start uh, when Liberace had her as uh, her opening act, but people weren't showing up for the opening act. They were missing Barbara entirely. And he said, uh, this was the story she told us, uh, he said, I need people to see you. I want people to see you. So rather than have her be an opening act, he switched the whole thing around and brought her in halfway through the show and he left and let her mm -hmm. take over. She did the exact same thing for us. She brought us in halfway through her show, left us on stage and you know we, we took over for a while. But those first concerts mm -hmm. like Madison Square Garden, every single person in that arena 
was somebody. There were foreign dignitaries, heads of state, um, titans of the music industry, um, uh, performers, legends, rock legends, uh, TV personalities, movie personalities. And just looking out into the audience, every single person in every single row as far back as you could see was a somebody. It was a crazy experience. I can only imagine too. And also those honors, David, too, of performing, like you mentioned, that Summer Olympics and uh, FIFA World Cup and in front of the dignitaries and, and, and celebrities, people like that, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, Queen Elizabeth II. I mean, there has to be nerves in there as a musician and knowing that this is the arts business and, of course, performing too. But at the same time, getting to meet people of this magnitude and, and just holding you know, specific titles in different countries, things like that. It has to be an honor at the same time and knowing there's probably butterflies in the stomach, but once the performance is, is kind of out there, you probably feel relieved too, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, the wonderful thing about meeting people of kind of this caliber of status is to see the magnetism and the power that these people hold and they wield, but to also see their humanity as well. And to uh, to be in their presence, yes, of course, there are butterflies and it's always like, like an awe-inspiring moment, but then to also see their humanity, like for example, with Queen Elizabeth, we met her several times and um, we were invited back uh, uh, multiple times. She saw us first at the, uh, the Royal Variety Show mm -hmm. um, when we first started out and then we got invited back for her uh, Diamond Jubilee. Um, and then uh, for uh, another concert, which was like a private event. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just so humbling to, to be honored in that way. But then to like see these people up close and just to realize that these are just people as well who've had just an exceptional trajectory. Really have to. And I love the fact you guys are so versatile. You know, we mentioned about collaboration, how music's becoming a crossover of a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I always say variety is kind of that spice of life david i love the fact you guys have spanish and you've got italian you've got french you got portuguese a little bit of latin english japanese there's so many cool things that you guys can do as a tenor group with your voices that maybe some others can't do well you know i've i've always said that il divo is like a musical juggling act um <laughs> because we didn't have a template because we didn't know what we were even trying to achieve we were just trying to like one track at a time figure out a way to be proud of that track. What is going to make this track unique unto itself? It really wasn't even about us. We were lending our voices, but it was all, we have a, we have a, a saying in the band and we've had it for 20 years. You just have to do what's best for the song. Mm -hmm. You pour your heart and soul into the music and you create something that you can be proud of then it's something you can be proud of. And we just one track at a time, always head down, nose to the grindstone, trying to analyze it. For that first album, we tried every song on the album in four different languages, just to see which one worked. And with each member singing the whole song front to back, just to see whose voice fit best in which situation. There's ultimately, there's like 16 versions of every track that we recorded and then you know, the, the producers do their magic and go, oh, this would be nice, and this would be nice. And then we start layering upon that as well. And it was always just this kind of collaborative experimental process, which we're still in. You know, we just recorded um, our 20th anniversary album, yeah. first time on vinyl, <laughs> plug. Um, and we went through the same process of, you know, we've mm -hmm. got this song, we found multiple versions of each song by different artists to say, okay, which one grabs us in a way, which one do we want to emulate or do we want to just completely go against the grain and do something completely different? Like we did with the song Crazy, which is just, mm -hmm. does not sound any, or Despacito. These songs don't sound anything nearly close to the originals. No, they don't. You guys put your own kind of spin on it, your own variety of the vocal capabilities, which I love so much. I'm going to throw some numbers out there before I take a quick time out, though. But uh, 30 million plus units, this is crazy. I mean, with 50 number one hits and 160 gold and platinum records throughout 35 countries. I know I covered a lot of ground there for the <laughs> listeners. Amazing. Congratulations on that, too. But it, go, it does go to show that you guys collectively, as doing what's best for the song, really resonates with the with the music the listening audience out there the fans who buy the music right 
Yeah. Yeah. I think this is what, you know, it's, it's as an opera singer, the thing that you're always trying to do is get out of your own way. You let the music lead, you let the, the virtuosic compositions of these great composers, these are the goalposts that you're just trying to, you know, you know, make a field goal. You're just trying to like kick the, kick the ball <laughs> through the uprights. And <laughs> you, you just do your best. You, you spend time crafting your art, crafting your voice, working technically, drilling it, drilling it, drilling it, drilling it. And, but that's opera. You know, what we do is not opera. What we do is we take pop music and we apply everything that we've learned in our classical careers and our kind of pedigree and, and our, our training. We take that and it, it then becomes, it starts like treading into a, what I would call a jazz territory. Having been a jazz musician before I became a singer, it treads into this area of improvisation. Not that we improvise, like once the song is done, it's done and, and we do our best to recreate that every time. But while we're creating it, we have no idea how a song is gonna end up. We, we kind of have a framework. We know what the goalposts are. We just keep trying, we just keep trying, we just keep trying and you get that one moment, you go, ooh, mm -hmm. well, that's cool. Let's build on that. And you just keep going until you get to a point where it's like, okay, now, now we might overcook this. We might go too far. Leave it there. Let the producers do their work at that point. <laughs> That's the magic of it, too. Well, it's a great segue coming up after this time out here. We're going to come back and talk about the producers. Of course, again, Il Devo changing the way of that popular perception out there of classical and opera uh, landscape forever, too. The 20th anniversary album is out right now. I love the vinyl, too. would love to hopefully get a copy of that too at some point too because i have the old vinyl records i still love to spend on my record player today too and the fantastic sounds guys uh, it's a great quartet out there too uh, il devo across all those streaming uh, platforms make sure you guys go get the 20th anniversary album we'll come back after this time out here but first a time out for our friends for jewelry we all like jewelry here on this program right we all do here it's the perfect gift for your spouse friend family member uh, jewelry by tommy's got you covered you can email my friend tom burley at burley system at yahoo.com today to order it's handcrafted handmade it's jewelry by Tommy. Also, a friend out there, Jonathan Bond, for the best in country Christian music out there. Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter, too. Just had a lunch with him a couple of weeks ago, too, out there. Uh, check him out, jonathanbond.com. Uh, click the link to notify of the latest project out there, too. If you need that positive, uplifting message, we all do out there, too, every day. Look no further than my good buddy, Jonathan Bond Music. Quick time out. More with David Miller of the group Il Devo, KKTC, True Country, 99.9, and our friends at HighTideCountry.net. Stay tuned. Ever thought about owning your own business? Tanya Lapsley Cockett did. She decided a little over five years ago that she was going to be an entrepreneur, so she started her travel business. Tanya is married and works a full-time job. Her business has given her amazing opportunities. Not only does she get to help people create memories by booking their vacations, sporting and entertainment tickets, rental cars, etc., but it has also allowed her to help other families create legacy income. The travel industry is extremely lucrative and is an $8 trillion industry. The travel industry is projected to earn in excess of $15 trillion over the next 10 years. The travel industry pays its professionals up to 70 to 80% commission on the travel that they book for themselves and their clients. As a travel business owner, Tanya books travel and teaches others how to own and operate their own travel business. She is a director in training on the marketing side of her business, where she has helped over 90 families start their own businesses. If you're interested in owning your own travel business, please contact Tanya at 917-743-1199 or at ladytlc3555 at me.com. The Caden Gordon Show. Today's best country mix is a two-hour show playing independent and mainstream country music you know and love. Be sure to check it out at thecadengordonshow.com for more information on the show. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. 
And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Yeah, I might have a glass of that tonight. Bangtail Whiskey, our friends out there too. And of course, our friends, the CadenGordonShow.com, uh, Jonathan Bond, and of course, our friends out there, Jewelry uh, by Tommy, also Lady TLC's Travel Agency. If you guys want to become a sponsor, more in the reel there on how to do that too, just send us an email. We'll get you guys taken care of. Back here with David Miller on the Backstage Pass, the group Il Devo, the 20th anniversary album across all those streaming platforms out there too as well. So check that out at the same time. And uh, we're having the uh, great conversation here on the show here. Let me ask you about this. You guys stepping in the studio, taking this 20th anniversary album, too. What was your favorite song to record, David? For this album, um, you know, that's, that's a difficult, uh, difficult question because there were so many moments across this album that I just... Uh, well, one, there were many moments that I thought were not going to work, um, that through the process, you know, the process I mentioned before of, you know, one song at a time, it convinced me over time, just sort of doing my best, giving my all into it, and then hearing it come back um, and going, you know what, I put my hands up, I was wrong. Crazy is one of those songs. Um, I thought the song was a bit too too pop, a bit too modern. Um, but Sebastian, you know, he he comes uh, came from the pop world in France, and um, he had a um, his grounding was in in pop music, not in traditional classical, and so. Uh, he said, you know what, for too many years now, I think we've been erring too far on the side of classical. I really want to kind of modernize this album. I want this album to be 20th anniversary of like where we've come from for 20 years, but I want this to be a springboard into the next 20 years. I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean? We want to do something like crazy. I'm like, oh God, no, no, no. There's no way. How are we going to do that? We don't dance. We're not a real boy band. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but he made a demo and he was he was uh, co-arranging and part of the production team uh, with our producer, Carlos Lopez. And they created, they, they slowed it down a little bit. They made it a bit more mysterious, made, give it kind of this cinematic feel. And it worked. And I was like, wow, okay. I, I clearly have founder syndrome of uh, <laughs> wanting Il Devo to sound like it did 20 years ago, which at the time sounded very modern. The producers we were using were using, you know, kind of reverbs and, and, and mixing and uh, mastering and, and samples that were current for 2004. These people were producing for Britney Spears, et cetera, et cetera. So we had a modern sound back then that I have come to believe in my head like that's what il divo sounds like mm -hmm. it's like no that's what il divo used to sound like so now you know there's there's uh there's crazy there's um despacito which mm -hmm. for me despacito is like if you look at the lyrics and look at the translation of the lyrics it is so direct yeah. and uh just, just directly sexual. It's a very directly mm -hmm. sexual song, and I was like, "Oh God, I, I don't want to. This is too much. This is not romance. This is facts. It's too much mm -hmm. for a Levo." And so then, Or stepped in, and he was like, "Well, you know, if we take out this one, we take out that one, we take out that one, we distill the whole thing down into its essence." And in doing so, we realized that the song, or I realized that the other boys got it before I did realized that the song is very romantic and that sexuality is a part of romance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you, if you take out the things that are just so direct, what you're left with is a man expressing his desire for a woman and, mm -hmm. you know, or, or, or 
in, in any case, a, a one person expressing an overture to another. And that's, you have to start a dialogue somewhere. Um, and also, you know, there was the song um, Never Enough from mm -hmm. The Greatest Showman. And I was like, this is just, this is crazy. We're, we're gonna be screaming this out. How, how do you guys think we're gonna do this on tour? This is crazy <laughs> what we're doing. Um, but we are, we're going to. Mm -hmm. I have to figure out, you know, we still got a couple weeks left here. Got to figure out how to put that in my voice in time for the shows. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's um, it's an album full of surprises for me, mm -hmm. and I don't really think I have a favorite. I was actually listening to um, the album on my record player because I I've not listened to uh, records in quite a long time, mm -hmm. and I put it on there and I was listening to it and I was like, this is a it's super modern. And there's a lot of things going on that are like really modern going on, but it also putting it on the record player and having it have that kind of sonority and have, you know, the sound of the needle happening really makes it super old school. So both of these together, that's literally what Il Devo is and what the intention mm -hmm. always was, was to marry modern and old school. So I, I think it's a great album. I, it's entirely possible that this is my favorite album of, our 10 albums. Oh, that's a great album, no doubt. You guys remind me a little bit of that. I, I use that phrase, the Masters Golf Tournament, which happened last week. They say a tradition unlike any other. You guys yeah. are actually not like any other group out there. You have your own unique sound. Uh, Il Devo is, is one of the best and most uh, accomplished groups out there, too. Hey, I want to ask you about this uh, because I know Ors has said this, and I know Sebastian talked about this, too, and I read somewhere. You know, he talked about you guys being brothers. Now, obviously, to stay together for this long, you're going to have your differences just like any group out there, any band, any, any uh, duo, vocal duo, vocal trio. Talk about that camaraderie and how important that is and what he meant when he said, we're brothers. <laughs> <laughs> well, which version do you want? Do you want the, the, the version that is, you know, everybody wants us to say that we're, you know, these guys who are just get along so well since the beginning and we're at one point we were called the perfect sons-in-law and um to some extent that's true we had um you know with with carlos we had mm -hmm. 18 years of bonding experiences you know i mentioned before standing on madison square garden on stage with barbara streisand duetting with barbara streisand that environment, all those people, all those somebodies, a very humbling moment. We had so many moments like this over mm -hmm. the course of 18 years. The first time we went to a new country together that none of us had been to, the first time singing in front of X, Y, or Z, making that first song, that first track, making that first album, first time we appeared on TV in multiple countries, first time we had a number one, First time we broke a record, the first time, you know, there was just, it was like one right after the next. And these moments bond you as people. You can't get away from that. It's, um, it, it's just, there, there's like, it's, it's an energetic tether that you have. And to some extent that created this family-esque situation um, because, you know, you grow up with your family. It's it's something that's just happening, and you things happen to you as a family, and you you go through events, highs, lows, left and right, and you are bonded to these people for life. I am bonded to these guys for life. But at a certain point, we did stop calling it brothers. Worst probably still calls it that because that's the version people want to hear. <laughs> at a certain point, internally, we stopped calling each other brothers. We started calling each other sisters okay. because. There was so much drama that happens behind the scenes that nobody really sees and that we don't really need or want people to see. Mm -hmm. But we're people like anybody else. And when people get into stressful situations and being on tour is a stressful situation. I don't care who you are. I don't care what facade you are presenting to the world being like, I love being on tour. No, you don't. <laughs> You're in airplanes all the time. You're in cars. You're in hotels. You're in venues. We go to all these countries. You know how much we see of these countries? Almost nothing. Because it's always about the show. You always have to be 100% of 100%, 100% of a time. And it's just that is like its own 
over a long enough timeline, that amount of cortisol just makes your whole body turn to mush. It's not time to get done yet. You got nine more months to go. Sorry. Um, so the drama crops up and the, 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 the claws can come out. The good, the good thing about these guys, and I think of myself as well, we all have wonderful senses of humor. And we always use humor to diffuse any situation that crops up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that humor is locker room humor. And sometimes, you know, it's just fluff and stuff and it's funny. But uh, yeah, these guys, I am bonded to these guys for the rest of my life. Well, that's a beautiful sound, no doubt about it, too. We'll take our final time out, come back, and we'll talk things other than music here. We'll get into some hobbies, things like that, some things David likes to do for fun, considering getting ready to go back on tour here <laughs> in a couple of weeks, too. And, of course, I always say one of my favorite questions, what does David do to take care of his voice out there when on tour? you got to take care of the instrument that makes the, the big coins out there, too, no doubt. But, of course, if you're looking to cash in right now, too, the perfect gift for your spouse, friend, family member. Jewelry by Tommy's got you covered. Email our friend Tom Burley, Burley System at yahoo.com to place an order today. Handcrafted, handmade, it's jewelry uh, by Tommy. Also the best in the uplifting, positive message of country Christian music. Check him out, Jonathan Bond at jonathanbond.com. Click the link below to get to the latest music video on YouTube out there, too. Love our friend Jonathan, all the work he does here for the show. Quick time out here. A word from our sponsors. More with David Miller of Il Devo on the Backstage Pass. Stay tuned. The Bangtail Pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass... Ever thought about owning your own business? Tanya Lapsley Cockett did. She decided a little over five years ago that she was going to be an entrepreneur, so she started her travel business. Tanya is married and works a full-time job. Her business has given her amazing opportunities. Not only does she get to help people create memories by booking their vacations, sporting and entertainment tickets, rental cars, etc., but it has also allowed her to help other families create legacy income. The travel industry is extremely lucrative and is an $8 trillion industry. The travel industry is projected to earn in excess of $15 trillion over the next 10 years. The travel industry pays its professionals up to 70 to 80% commission on the travel that they book for themselves and their clients. As a travel business owner, Tanya books travel and teaches others how to own and operate their own travel business. She is a director in training on the marketing side of her business, where she has helped over 90 families start their own businesses. If you're interested in owning your own travel business, please contact Tanya at 917-743-1199 or at ladytlc3555 at me.com. The Kane and Gordon Show is a two-hour show playing the best in country music. So check it out at thecadengordonshow.com. Again, that is thecadengordonshow.com. And back here on the show, David Miller joining us from the group Il Devo, the 20th anniversary album across all those streaming platforms out there, too. I wanted to get into this here with the final segment, too, because I remember uh, it was late 2023. You guys welcome Steve as a member and kind of turned the page, and you guys had put out a uh christmas ep it's kind of an independent release uh, under a partnership i believe with 30 tigers too at the same time talk about that because i thought that was really cool because anytime an artist or group a duo band out there can put it can also put a little spin on the holidays maybe do some original songs and some covers with it too that had to be a fun project david well it was a fun project um it was an ambitious project because we um we wanted to you know, we had a we had a Christmas leg of the tour that was coming up, um, and up until 
this last year, we only had that first Christmas album, which only has 10 songs on it. So basically since that Christmas album we put out, we have been doing the sporadic Christmas tour, but we've only had 10 songs to do it with, and that's not really enough for an hour and a half worth of a show. So we have to throw other stuff in, like, you know, Unbreak My Heart and My Way and a bunch of stuff that's not really Christmas music, but, you know, it, people overlook that because it's the holidays and it's fun and we're mm -hmm. fun and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, when, when we lost Carlos um, to COVID and we were trying to pick up the pieces, we... Um, we basically we we had we entered into one of the darkest phases of our career and 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 of our lives, losing our brother as as we said, um, it really it hit all of us really hard, and we didn't really quite know what to do or if Ildiva was going to survive, and we decided um, uh, well, what actually happened was Carlos went into the hospital and this is much as much as we knew. And at a certain point, and they said he's got COVID and it's, it's kind of getting worse. And we thought to ourselves, you know, he's going to pull through. He's a strong man. He's, he is a tour de force of will. Mm -hmm. We were absolutely convinced he was going to, he was going to pull through. And in the meantime, we asked Steven to kind of fill in for him because there was going to be some recovery, some vocal rehabilitation that was going to, you know, be necessary at a certain point. So we asked Steven, we said, hey, you know, do you want to step in, take Carlos's track? We'll go out on tour. And when Carlos is feeling better again, he'll come back uh, and, and swap out. Mm -hmm. And then the unimaginable happened. And so then we switched gears to... <clears throat> to honor Carlos mm -hmm. and uh, we spent an entire year giving memorial performances to which Stephen was helping us complete the sound of Il Devo and, and taking Carlos's part. Um, and we got through that year, arguably the worst year I, as a professional singer mm -hmm. that I've ever had to endure um, with that much emotion, still trying to sing and sing the way we do, it, it really started to compromise my throat. So in 2023, we decided to turn a corner um, and start trying to let go of the trauma, start trying to move past the trauma uh, after a year of memorial concerts. And we called that tour A New Day. <laughs> and we invited Stephen to continue making music with us on that tour. And about halfway through that tour, we went, oh man, next year is Il Divo's 20th anniversary. Mm -hmm. We have to make an album. And we had to make some really hard and fast and quick decisions of, are we going to do this? Do we want to continue? Is this going to happen? Well, we realized we had to have a fourth member. Il Divo is predicated on four voices and one of those voices being a baritone. So we asked Stephen to join the band and he became the official fourth member. And we immediately started in on, okay, great. You're the fourth member. We're going to make an album. And also we have this Christmas tour coming up. So we're going to try and record 10 songs of new album and four songs of Christmas in a single go in a single month. Mm -hmm. And that was an extremely ambitious <laughs> chunk to try and bite off. And it was literally skin of our teeth. The last song that we recorded was the original song that Seb, myself, and Carlos Lopez wrote, mm -hmm. um, Despertar Sin Ti. We had not finished writing the song on the last day of recording. We were finishing the song and recording the song because there was so much all packed in together. It's a lot of fun. People love the new Christmas tracks, um, but it was a very stressful recording period. I can only imagine, too. And, of course, the tour kicks off April 30th down in Mexico, too. Some great cities down there, too. Check it out. Ildevo.com out there, too. Guadalajara, one of the stops, too. And so many other great tours taking you guys uh, back to some very familiar destinations, too. So you guys can check them out. Ildevo.com. All right, let's get to some fun stuff here. And your downtime. Now, before the tour starts back or maybe before it ended, the last one. What does David Miller like to do for fun? You know, I I like doing a lot of different things. Um, COVID gave me a chance to really up my my game in the kitchen. 
Um, like most people, I learned how to bake bread, sourdough bread. Um, still have that original sourdough starter in the uh, in the fridge out in the garage. Mm -hmm. um, but learning to cook uh, different things, different ethnic foods, um, learning how to make uh, uh, Indian food, some Ooh. Korean dishes, uh, learned how to make sushi, still terrible at rolling sushi, um, but I can make the sushi rice, which is a much longer process than I would have ever imagined. It takes like four hours to make sushi rice. Um, so I love cooking, love trying new recipes. Um, I'm also very into film. Um, I, over the 20 years of Il Devo, have created um, most of the uh, you know, pre-social media, um, all of the backstage, kind of the making of the album, the making of the tour, all of these things I have hosted on a, at this point, hosted on my YouTube page, Devo David Miller, plug. Um, and I still do this, but now because, you know, the zeitgeist is people want this in digestible chunks of like two and a, you know, between two and a half and 10 minutes. The, what I really enjoy is the long form, mm -hmm. uh, creating a, like a full documentary. And eventually this translated into actual narrative film. Um, I've filmed uh, several videos for Il Devo across the Timeless album. We created a, um, a Kurosawa-esque um, four-part uh, music video spanning uh, four of our songs that tells the same story from four different each of our four different vantage points. Mm -hmm. um, and this all kind of translated into wanting to create uh, films of operas. I think this is a highly under uh, underdeveloped um, area of uh, of um, streamable content. Mm -hmm. um, I, opera is still my absolute number one first love musically. I love making music with Il Devo, but in terms of like the musical complexity of, you know, pop music versus the virtuosic opera, um, I love opera. So it translated into wanting to make films of opera. And speaking of opera, for the last 13 years, I've been chipping away at my solo opera album. So I've been taking care of that in my spare time as well. It, you know, chunks in between tours, in between recording sessions of Il Devo. Um, and of course, during COVID, everything shut down. So nothing was happening on that front. But I literally, as of two days ago, finished my contributions to the album. I'm now handing it off for mastering and I'm hoping to have it out later this year. It'll be exciting too. Can't wait to hear that too. Very accomplished in his career. And of course, uh, ildevo.com for the latest tour dates out there, April 30th in Mexico down there too. Wish I could actually just fly down, catch a show, especially that one. I just love Guadalajara. I've been down there before. Beautiful town too as well. And if you guys can catch him on the tour dates, uh, check him out, ildevo.com and go get the 20th anniversary album across all the streaming platforms. David, a pleasure to chat this afternoon. Congratulations on a great career. Uh, best of luck with the solo opera album. And let's do this again, my friend, at some point. Appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Ha happy to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. You got it. David Miller from the group Il Diva. We're back tomorrow. Another version of the Backstage Pass. Same bat time, same bat channels out there too. KKTC tonight in prime time from 6.20 to 7 o'clock too is one other artist we're going to feature on the Artist Spotlight interview. Thanks to our sponsors out there too. And of course out there via the LMNOC streaming app out there up into Colorado, New Mexico. Out there you can hear us and always high tide country. .net internet streaming station in Oklahoma City, where this interview is about to hit right now, too, for <laughs> release tomorrow, too. We'll see you guys on the show coming up tomorrow. Until then, take care and God bless. We'll see you soon.